daughter. They disagreed and uh, they divorced. Okay. Uh, he got married to a second wife. Mm -hmm. Stayed with her for two, three years. Mm -hmm. Divorced because they couldn't have a baby. Got married the third time. The same story. Three years, no baby. Divorced. The fourth time, again, the same period of time, no baby. Divorced. This was actually the fifth wife. Wow. As it were. And this guy is in his 40s. And this guy was in the 40s. Okay. And the lady was, I think, in the 20s. Actually, I think she was about 25, 26. Okay. So, um, of course, when we get such results, what we want to do is want to make sure that the results are okay. So, I sent him for another test altogether. Now, this hour, you know, we're not going to be talking politics, uh, but we have OBGYN and fertility specialist Dr. Kireki Omanwa. He will be demystifying issues on reproductive health. He will also be talking uh, to us on if men are equally culpable in couples that are facing difficulty with conceiving a baby. So stay tuned for that. I'm your news and politics anchor Ali Badawi. It's Friday the 28th of October and we are coming to you live from Kilimanjaro Studios outside Washington, D.C. So please remember to subscribe to our One Mike Show YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at One Mike Show. On panel with me tonight is Mr. One Mike Kamakawa. We have our resident DJ Moshfire. Ruth is also in studio tonight and Mika Och is out. Our super producer is none other than Mubelo Bandio. And tonight we are just gonna go ahead and get started right away because my oh my, this is a topic that uh, we never thought we'd ever cover. Uh, but uh, but it's a very important topic and uh, we will see how this will go. But now uh, we we know we've, we've all had uh, mamas and stories about the aunt, maybe the neighbor or even an in-law who got married but still does not have children. Now, childbearing is considered a fundamental part that fulfills a marriage in most African cultures. Now, not having a child by a certain age is sometimes perceived as a curse and goes with the burden of social stigma amongst peers. Now, for a long time, issues associated with infertility and childbearing have mostly been burdened on the woman. And in some extreme cases, we've seen divorces and even the marriage of a second or even a third wife. Now, the key question in tonight's conversation will be focusing on whether the man may be the one to blame in situations where a couple is struggling to get a child. And to guide us in this conversation is OBGYN and renowned fertility specialist, Dr. Kireki Omanwa. Now, Dr. Omanwa consults as a facility uh, expert at Frontline Medical Center at Gong Road in Nairobi. He is the president of the Kenya Obstetrical and Gynecological Society. Uh, Dr. Omanwa is also a senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Daktari Karibu Sana to the U.S. and Karibu to the One Mike Show. Thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. Okay. And uh, it's good to be here. Okay, great. And how are you feeling today? Mimi niko sambamba kabisa. Okay, sambamba kabisa. Yes. <laughs> yeah, tunapenda evo. Now, before we get started on the conversation, uh, what exactly are you doing in the U.S.? Did you just come to be on the One Mike Show? <coughs> yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's right i that, jumped yeah. in that, that can also be an option okay um uh, actually i came for uh, for a conference mm -hmm. there is a conference called um, american society of reproductive uh, medicine okay of which i am a member mm -hmm. and uh, they have an annual conference every year last year it was actually here in baltimore mm -hmm. and um last year last year this year it was in uh, california mm-hmm and actually came from California yesterday. Okay. Yes. So yeah. you're fresh from California. I'm fresh from California. To be on the one mic show. To be on the one mic show. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we are really happy and we really appreciate it because I don't know how we would have had this conversation uh, <laughs> yes. by ourselves. And, and, and now the core question which uh, we would like you to help us clarify today yes. is whether men should equally share the blame mm -hmm. for couples that are struggling to get a child. Mm -hmm. Now, historically, the woman has suffered the burden of blame and, uh, and we seek to find out if that blame has been fair. But now before we get on that, Daktari, because I know a lot of people are curious and they want to know that. But before we get on that, on who's to blame or who's not to blame, yes. uh, from your own experience mm -hmm. as a facility, as, as a fertility expert and as an African man, yes. uh, what is it that you feel scares men from confronting this issue? The issue of fertility is a complicated issue, especially when it comes to men. I'll start with a story. Okay. Um, uh, we love stories. Yes. Um, one time a, a gentleman came to see me mm -hmm. 
He was, I think, somewhere from um, uh, Masabit or Mandera. I can't exactly remember. Okay. But he came with a um, sperm test result. Mm -hmm. And the sperm test result actually showed that there were no sperm at all. Oh, wow. Zero sperm. What you okay. call azospermia. Okay. Um, so when I took the medical history, because mm -hmm. you take the medical history, what is the problem, what, uh, how long this problem has been, uh, has been going on, mm -hmm. and uh, the information he gave me was... Um, a, a bit sad, if I if I can put it that way. Um, he had got married quite some time before. The guy was, I think, about in the forties. Eh? Okay. And uh, from the first wife, they had a daughter. They disagreed and uh, they divorced. Okay. Uh, he got married to a second wife. Mm -hmm. Stayed with her for two three years. Mm -hmm. Divorced because they couldn't have a baby. Got married the third time. The same story. Three years, no baby divorced the fourth time again the same period of time no baby divorced this was actually the fifth wife wow as it were. and this guy is in his 40s and this guy was in the 40s okay. and the lady was i think in the 20s actually i think she was about 25 26. okay so um of course when we get such results what we want to do is want to make sure that the results are okay so i sent him for another test altogether okay assumed i assumed that the other one was faulty Mm -hmm. So the one that came, it was also zero sperm. Mm -hmm. So it was he was esospermic, and, um, and and when you say zero sperm, let me scroll <coughs> down a bit. What oh, exactly? Esospermic, <laughs> what exactly do you mean by zero? <laughs> sperm? Like pole pole bro. Yeah. That other one, yeah. please. Yeah. Ezo. Ezospermic, yeah. Ezo. What what it yeah. basically means is that in the ejaculate, there was not one sperm. There was zero completely. Okay. okay. So um, I sent him for some other tests and they, they came back that actually he was not producing sperm at all. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he was desperate. With the first meeting when I met him, he told me, Dr. this is, um, you know, a do or die. Why? Because the family, the in-laws had started now questioning what is happening. They've been married for two years. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it was getting to that time when he normally divorces with the, with mm -hmm. the, with the women and they wanted a baby ASAP. Yeah. So when we went through the results again, and, um, and he asked me a pertinent question, he said, but Akhtari, what is the problem? That is number one. I explained to him, you know, what the issue was. And then he asked me something which I could not, um, a, a, a question which I could not answer. Um, yes, but Akhtari, we had one child with my first wife. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask who's, you. Whose who's is that child? Yikes. Wow. And uh, obviously, I didn't know the answer. <laughs> I said, I don't know. What you need to do, you may need to go back to your first wife and, um, you know, have this conversation and see where the problem was or where the problem is. Because obviously, from the second wife, third wife, fourth wife, and he was on the fifth okay. wife, he was not going to have a baby with can I ask a question on yes. that part? Because this is the, the consequences of this. Who was initiating these divorces? Did he tell you? I think it was him. Okay. I think it was him. And then he mentioned something else. That every time he divorced, these women went and got married again and they had children. Okay. So obviously the problem was in his side. Yes. The only thing is that it's very difficult for us men to accept that we have a problem. Yes. And once... Uh, we don't have um, uh, we don't have that str let me call it strength quote yes. unquote eh? mm -hmm. to actually come and say look I have an issue and I need I need help yeah we have a problem with that so coming back to the introductory question that you asked yes is it possible that we men can have our contributory to this problem yes we are actually in a very, very big, uh, very, very big way. Yeah. Start from the beginning. When you talk about infertility, is, this is basically an, uh, a, a, a situation whereby um, a couple, a man and a woman, the other issues we are not going to, it's beyond the scope of this discussion. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are in a relationship. They are having intercourse two to three times a week. There is no contraception which is being used and there is no conception. We call that primary infertility. In secondary infertility is that this couple, yes, the same you know principles apply two to three times of intercourse a week. Um, a year has passed, but in the secondary infertility, they have had a child or children 
or the lady has had a conception before, but they're trying to have another baby another one. and it is not happening. Okay. Now, when it comes to statistics, um, it looks a little bit um, uh, horrible. Let me put it that way. Generally, infertility uh, uh, as a problem affects about maybe about 8 to 10% in the developed world where we are. Like so in the about US. DC, uh, yeah. Uh, where we are, it's about 8 to 10%. Europe is about the same. When it comes to Africa, the problem is a lot worse, which is paradoxical because um, if you look at the number of children that our women have on average are in more. Kenya, it's about four or five children. Okay. It has dropped from where it was in the, in the 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. where there were eight, nine, you know, sometimes uh, ten children. So the number has dropped. But still, we still have a huge problem. The fertility rate in our country is about 20%. Sometimes it went to up to 30%. So let's, wow. let's slow down there. Let's yes. slow down there. So you mean, so the 20% infertility rate, yes. is, is, it, is, it, is that an African statistic or specifically Kenya? It's more or less African. Okay. There are other places where it goes up to, up to, up to 30%. There is something you call an infertility belt. Mm -hmm. And the infertility belt starts from um, down south. Not really south, but call it south. Huh? From around Zambia there, comes, crosses into Tanzania, touches a bit of Rwanda, Uganda, comes into Kenya, goes to the west, all the way to the west. Okay. Now, infertility. One, one in five men. One in five. No, let's not go Couples. into the men first. We are just yeah. talking about, well, about the, in one general. in five people. In general. Yeah, in yeah. general. Mm -hmm. About, let's say 20%, these are the conservative estimates. Okay. But it can be even up to 30%. Oh, wow. So, huge, huge numbers. So, just to have a sort of the f of feel of the numbers, if we say that the Kenyan population is about 50 million, yes, and uh, we say that half of these are actually men and women who are capable of having Very a baby, children, so yeah. that is 25 million. Yes. So 10% of 25 million is 2.5 million. Yeah. So 20% is 5 million, give or take. Okay. So you can say that the whole of Nairobi, for example, plus a few other counties, Kiambu maybe, throw in a maybe Kajiado or Machakos, all of those people who are residing there are, actually have issues with infertility. Wow. It's huge numbers. If you go to Tanzania, for example, Tanzania's population is a lot higher than Kenya's. Mm -hmm. And if you work with the same average estimate of about 20%, uh, we have huge numbers. So it's a big, big problem. So it's a big, big problem. Uh, is this like a silent problem? People don't talk about it? People don't talk about infertility. Because oh. that those are big numbers. Yeah. Now... Even just before you even go to the numbers, mm -hmm. the World Health Organization has actually um, uh, designated that um, infertility is the fifth highest disability in the fifth world. Highest in the world. Okay. So when you go to the supermarkets, you find um, you find uh, those parking places which are special for, mm -hmm. for disabled. <laughs> Mobility, so yeah. yeah. So essentially, we should say, you know what? When you go to parking places, these guys who have issues with the, they should have their own parking places. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, I want to remind <laughs> the listeners. Jokes. <laughs> this guy's got jokes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I just want to remind the listeners, if you're just joining us, that you're tuned in uh, to the interview hour of the One Mike Show. We're in studio with OBGYN and fertility specialist, Dr. Kireki Omanwa. Now, Dr. Omanwa is a renowned fertility expert and is also a senior lecturer <coughs> at the University of Nairobi's Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He's with us today to talk about the taboo of infertility generally and also infertility in men. Now, later in the conversation, he will tell us about some lifestyle cho choices that can put you at risk of infertility. So I want you to stay tuned for that. Then please remember to share our live stream and like our Facebook page. In fact, I've shared the YouTube Live, live stream, I've pinned it on Facebook. Uh, so if you know people who are not on Facebook and want to join it on this conversation, please share that YouTube live link with them because we're also live on YouTube. Then please remember to share our live stream and like our Facebook page. Do not forget that we are also active on Instagram. So please follow, subscribe, and keep spreading the word. Uh, but before we continue, Una, I want to bring you in. Uh, yeah. You know, I want you maybe to talk a little bit about why men don't engage in this conversation. And then first, tell us why, uh, or rather tell us the slight change that we have in format today for a social hour. Because we know that uh, people have a lot of questions on this topic. Uh, and tell us what's going to be happening, which is going to be in the next hour. You know, the call-in situation. So there's a slight format change because I think this issue needs to be addressed. And I think uh, Ruth posed the question as to 
who if this conversation is hard yeah and dr said it is not hard and i think also <clears throat> it's a it's an issue where we as men need also to start thinking of ourselves as a probable cause to infertility in our relationships because like he said uh prior he talked to, to a gentleman who had got married and divorced five times and every time this these other wives went eh, wakapata watoto mm -hmm. so apa ikoshida and i think it is it is a very and i think we've had this conversation before where we say you know what sometimes it is important to have a discussion between your partner mm -hmm. if you guys are seeking to want to get married do you want kids in addition to you wanting kids are you able to have kids mm -hmm. are your facilities your the equipment the equipment yeah is it up to par and i think daktari is going to tell us uh, what up to par means further down and then in the later portion we are going to have a call in section please maswali mulete infertility is on deck and we have the subject matter expert in studio right here live on the one mic show okay msingoje kusimuliwa yes msingoje kusimuliwa <laughs> you know ndio hii hapa ngoma inachezwa size wao usingoje kusimuliwa ah <laughs> uh, wana welcome sunaya ya ipan uh, wa shekendi rangu sle karibuni sana wana hear your questions start typing your questions um please let us know you know like what you want to know in the second hour of course the number is going to be 2026834570 press star 5 to speak that's going to be in the second hour where we're going to be taking in our live uh, questions and uh, mimo kwenange here is saying i'm glad we're having this conversation uh now and then washeke says the burden of fertility or lack of thereof has always been placed on women and fell 100% and, 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 and that's what agree. we're here to demystify and just piggybacking on um washeke's uh question um uh, or rather even before going to what might be causing infertility especially in men because that's never spoken about i want to bring in ruth to this conversation uh, and i know ruth you have some questions on actually women's reproductive health to to dr omanwa uh, and as you address your questions to dr omanwa I want both of you um, to have in mind some blind spots that men might have regarding the reproductive health of their partners or their spouses or their girlfriends or whoever they're choosing to have babies with. Ruth. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad to be in the studio. Glad to meet uh, Dr. Omwano. Dr. Omanwa. Omanwa. Just yeah. call him Dr. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. So I know when I walked <laughs> into the studio today, I said, Mimi, I'm coming to the doctor's office, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because there are questions that I, as a woman, would ask uh, OBGYN. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as we talk about infertility, um, and this is a huge topic in uh, bringing in men around to it, because as, as you said, men don't talk about it. Um, there's a, a huge denial about it. But also there are things that I know women would want to hear um, just about their health. And so men can listen to this. They can ask questions about it. But this is just generally just as a woman. So there is uh, two things I'd like to talk about mm -hmm. right now or later on in the show is fibroids because that's becoming a huge problem. And also it can impede fertility. Uh, and the other one is HPV. I think uh, I got my shot when I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. But right now is when men are getting their shots. And there is a huge resistance to it. So I want us to demystify that, what that is. Uh, and kind of explain to men why they need to get on board about this. So those are my two things I wanted to just make sure that we talk about today. All right, sure. Dr. So um, can I start with the fibroids? Let's start mm -hmm. with fibroids, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, fibroids basically is a growth in the womb. And uh, unfortunately, 40 to 60 percent of women of African origin, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're Kenyan, Tanzanian, African American, you know, whatever it is, wherever you are from, mm -hmm. um, in your reproductive period, mm -hmm. from when you start your periods, that's around uh, 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. until you finish the reproductive period in the late 40s, you will have a fibroid or fibroids for that matter. Wow. Now, yes. Now, we do not know exactly why, 
women of African descent or women of African origin mm -hmm. have this propensity of having these fibroids. But we deal with them. A friend of mine wrote a paper not too long ago. He said, mine are a hundred, what are yours? And we didn't know exactly what he was talking about. Yeah. But basically what he, what he meant in the paper is that he had removed a hundred fibroids from a lady. From one lady? From one lady. Wow. I've removed 74. So I haven't really got near that. 100, no, that's a, that's a lot still. It's a lot. Yeah. Those are a lot of fibroids. Now, what happens is that um, these fibroids, basically in the, in the, the muscle of, um, of the womb, mm -hmm. they're what you call smooth muscle. And in order for a woman to operate, feel like a woman, think like a woman, talk like a woman, behave like a woman, we need what is called estrogen. That is the hormone which is produced from your ovaries. They're the ones with is the hormone which regulates the way the way women women behave. <coughs> now, unfortunately, these hormone um they are what are called receptors in the smooth muscle. And um these fibroids actually grow from that smooth muscle. Okay. So it's sort of again a paradox. You need this hormone and this hormone will tend to, you know, cause uh, cause uh, cause fibroids. Mm -hmm. Um, other tests have been done, research has been done to look at whether there's any other hormone which can actually lead to that. There's what we call progesterone as well. Progesterone is not possible to you uh, to actually lead to uh, the growth of fibroids. Okay. Now, fibroids can be in different places. So if you look at the womb, um, the womb has a cavity and the cavity has a lining, what you call a lining, mm -hmm. which is called the endometrium. This endometrium is what comes out as a period when uh, there is no baby growing there. Mm -hmm. So you can have a fibroid growing in that cavity, what you call submucosal fibroid. You can have a fibroid growing. Uh, if you can say it's, if you say this cup, for example, is the is the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and uh, this is the cavity. So you can have a fibroid growing in the cavity mm -hmm. inside where a baby is Inside the womb grow. now. Yeah. yeah. We are talking about the womb all the oh, time. Is the uterus? Is the uterus. Can you use yeah. the word uterus? Uh, the uterus, the womb, is just the same. Okay. Now, in the cavity, this is where the baby grows. Mm -hmm. And as the baby grows, this, we say this is the cup. Mm -hmm. we, the, uh, the better thing would have been a balloon. Eh? Mm -hmm. So inside that balloon, when you blow in air, it grows. So when the baby is growing inside there, the balloon, the, the, the womb grows. So uterus grows with the baby. Mm -hmm. So you can have um, a fibroid growing inside there. You can have a fibroid hanging outside the, the womb or the uterus. You can have a fibroid growing outside now on top of the womb, for example. And you can also have this fibroid growing in the muscle of the womb. So there are several different places where these fibroids can actually grow. Okay. Now... The sizes of the fibroids can also vary, anywhere from a few millimeters, five millimeters, ten millimeters, which is basically nothing, mm -hmm. unless it is growing in the cavity where the baby is supposed to grow, mm -hmm. then it becomes a problem. You have very heavy periods, you have clots, um, uh, you may not, you may have issues with getting pregnant and so on, and they can sometimes grow to 10, 15, 20 centimeters as well. Now, wow. with the fibroids there, there are a lot of other issues which, 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 uh, which accompany that. Mm -hmm. As I said, most of the time, if it touches the, the, the lining, the endometrium, the periods are usually very heavy. Ladies tell us, you know, Daktari, I use 10 pounds a day and I use the maxi, the big ones. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even with the maxi, I also have to use a towel. I want us to pause there. It leaks. I want us to pause there. <laughs> After I use 10 panties a day. Pads. 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 Oh, oh, pads. pads. Oh, okay. Pads. Not yes. panties. He heavy ones uh, and everything. And this is where we want to talk about blind the spots. blind spots. Yes. yes. You know, because, know. Um, uh, you know, as you know, if, uh, as a man, you know, like who has, you know, your spouse or your girlfriend or whoever. Your sister. Or yes. whoever you're with. Or even your daughter. You know, or even your, your daughter. daughter. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like w what exactly is it that we need to understand, mm -hmm. you know, like when... A woman, for example, is going through that, you know, like, because when they tell you, this is what I'm going through, yeah. most of the time, you know, like, we, we are they blank. don't get it. Yeah, yeah, we are blank. We're like, yeah, you're in pain, you know, like, um, th there's, there's, there's no context that we have. Give her medicine and run. Yeah, so. <laughs> not, not even medicine. Yeah. Even just going to buy pads for your partner is important. Correct. I buy pads for my daughter. 
Do you okay. hide? Yes. Do you I hide don't. when you go to no, the store? No, I don't. Why yeah. should I hide? <laughs> no, because <laughs> kuna saa zingine unajiona fa kujificha ndio sionekana umebeba stay free. You know, this is something which is natural. Yes. It is something which is normal. Yes. Mm-hmm. And actually that blind spot, blind, blind spot that you are talking about. If she is bleeding that heavily, anakwambia ali hebu ende ununulie pads. Yes. Ah, yo, don't ask a question. Ah, no, 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 no. Hiyo sio kazi yangu. How do I how do I go and buy pads, you know? These are things which are supposed to be normal, which okay. are supposed normal. to be okay. Okay. So those very heavy periods. When mm-hmm. they start those heavy periods, the next thing that we want to ask is, are there any clots? Because usually very heavy periods yeah, are clots. accompanied by clots. Okay. Even by that alone, by 50% of the time, I know there is a problem. Okay. I know there is something which um, is touching on the lining. That yeah. is why this lady is having such heavy periods. Okay. M- but sometimes it uh, it has happened that uh, the fibroids are huge and the baby the, the lady is actually asymptomatic at all. She does not even know that she has um, fibroids. Okay. The periods are regular, no problems at all. Okay. Now, um the other thing that we ask about when uh, uh, we think that they are fibroids is whether there are any pressure symptoms. Because sometimes, if the fibroid is in front, what you call the anterior portion of um, of the of uh, of the uterus, it will actually touch on the on the on the bladder. Yeah, yeah. So the lady feels that she needs to go to the loo. When she goes for a short call, um, she has finished, but after a few minutes, she still wants to go back. Okay. And when she goes there, nothing really comes out. The same thing when she wants to go for a long call. Sometimes, if it is what you call a pedunculated fibroid. Which, which is sticking out onto what you call the, 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 the outer opening of the womb, of the uterus, uh, it can actually mimic uh, cervical cancer. So it will look like it, uh, the structure looks like it, even the smell sometimes, uh, it like s- rotten meat, but it is really actually not um, uh, not uh, cervical cancer. Yeah, and, and there's some questions here that are coming as, as you're speaking. There's actually one particular one, uh, as you mentioned, cancer. It's coming from a diaspora youth caucus. Yes. And they're saying this is a serious problem. I was just wondering if HPV 18 is cancerous in women and is equivalent to male infertility because men live in denial. Let's so start HPV with that. HPV will one. come back okay. to it. That's yeah. our coming. topic by itself. Okay. So yeah. let's first do the fibroids, then yes. go to H- HPV. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So we'll get back to your question, Daspera Youth Caucus. So, um, so heavy periods, clots, pressure symptoms. Sometimes we ask, or we do ask, whether there are any 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 issues during intercourse, because again, where this fibroid is located, and how big this fibroid is, can actually uh, be bring discomfort to the patient when she's having she's she's having um, uh, intercourse. How long have you had this problem? Um, what about in your family? Your sisters, maybe your, your, your mother, did, he, did she have these fibroids and so on? So once we've had that history, then the next thing we want to do is basically we want to do a vaginal examination. And that vaginal examination, remember this is a very intimate and very, uh, you know, exam yeah yeah so we want to do intrusive. it in a place it's intrusive. intrusive we want to do it in a dignified manner where we respect the lady and of course we want to have somebody there such that of course men not only men there have been some cases whereby um, uh, um health officers you know medical medical staff have actually molested women so we want to have um a chaperone there with you okay present when you're doing this uh, yeah. when you're doing this exam we want to tell the patient exactly what we're doing right from the word go all the way okay. and something else which we need to also to ask before we even go to the examination is when was the last pap um, a pap smear done which is also something which is very very important pap smear in kenya um about four or five percent women have actually had a pap smear done. Talk about pap smear. Because remember, we're talking about blind so spots for men. men. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And that actually will be connected to the, to the HPV, HPV that, we okay. that we are talking about. Okay. So when uh, she comes for this test, these are some of the things which we want to cover because sometimes she may not have that pap smear done at all. Mm-hmm. So once she has presented herself to you, this is something which you want to do. So we do that pap, we take that pap smear once we've done that, is then we actually examine, you know, with our fingers and with our hands. Um, somebody said that actually for a gynecologist, the fingers are the eyes that actually see. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a lot of information that I can actually deduce by just, you know, examining using my fingers. 
okay. I will know where this fibroid is, what the size is approximately, whether there are any other changes in the uterus, if there are any other changes in the ovaries, and so on. Yeah. Once I've done that, mm -hmm. now I want to confirm what I have examined uh, physically. I'll send her for a scan. And this usually should be a transvaginal scan. I want to emphasize here. Why? Because the transvaginal scan, when you're putting in the probe inside the vagina, uh, the, the waves actually are very close to, to the uterus. And the information they get from there, that is when it is changed into a picture which I can see, and the picture is big. And then I can actually see what is happening, as opposed to a transabdominal ultrasound, okay. the one which is done through the abdomen, mm -hmm. where you are told, go and drink at least some, you know, a few cups of water. And when you feel as, uh, that your bladder is full, that is when you come for the scan. That one is not as accurate as the transvaginal scan. Okay, very important. Now, before we continue, uh, Ruth, uh, th there's quite a number of questions that are coming here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want us to lose them. There was another one by Washeke mm -hmm. who was asking why we are seeing girls starting their menses mm -hmm. at an early age. We have seven... We have seven-year-olds having uh, their period. Uh, and then, um, you know, we'll j j just well, let's just park that question. Uh, there's uh, Vic Stana saying this doctor is very knowledgeable and his explanations are very thorough. Uh, and then uh, I think we also have uh, the Ambodak who says, my mom is listening to the one Mike show. Kimi Umana. All right, truth. <laughs> 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 Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Um, yeah, please keep the questions coming. Uh, we will address them as we go along. Uh, but the reason why I really, be, I really wanted to start with, the infer uh, with fibroids yes. because it does, it, it can affect fertility it does for affect women. Infertility. It does affect. Absolutely. And so the things you say there, and actually one of the things um, why I wanted us to address is because right now, depending on where the fibroid is or how many they are, one of the leading um, treatment plants is uh, an hysterectomy, which is an extreme measure. Yes. Uh, but then, uh, I've had a doctor so, say. So, so let's also talk to men because yes, when you talk to will. hysterectomy, yes. yeah, hysterectomy is a removal yeah. of the uterus, okay. which is yeah. a nuclear bomb because mm. that means you really cannot have. That's children. like the mother of all that bombs. Is, that is, more up. That's okay. it. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but that has become. Um, I, I've had in lots of circles that doctors are are, are bec like that is almost like a leading treatment plan, yeah. uh, which again is extreme. But then when you hear doctor say that it's less risky to remove the fibroid, it's less risky it's less risky to remove the uterus mm -hmm. than to remove the fibroid. Yeah. Then that becomes you know as a woman you're like okay what what do I do at this point? Now, you see when uh, uh, when. Uh, what I, what I normally do is um, when a patient comes to me and has a problem and have the uh, diagnosed what the problem is, mm -hmm. before we even go to what needs to be done or how I need to do it, mm -hmm. I put my wife in the shoes of the patient. And I say, mm -hmm. if my wife was in your shoes, what would, what I, would I, do I do for her? And that is what I teach my residents during mm -hmm. labor ward rounds mm -hmm. and in class as well. Okay. It's a different thing when you put your wife there or you put somebody very close to you there. Yeah. Because then you have a different perspective and you want the best for this person, isn't okay. it? Yeah. So when I put my wife there and I tell them, look, if my wife had fibroids, mm -hmm. this is what I would do. Because okay. I want the best for my wife. Mm -hmm. Now, something very important. You said uh, hysterectomy, that is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other things that we can do before we get there. Mm -hmm. Again, it depends. Number one, have you had a family? Mm -hmm. Have you had your children? Have you finished the number of children that you wanted to have? Do you plan to have children in the future? Mm -hmm. And if you're planning to have children in the future, then the, pos the issue of um, a hysterectomy is actually further down the possible options. Mm -hmm. It is not the first option. Okay. Now, um, uh, again, it depends on the sizes and so on. But something else which we always must mention is that um, removing the fibroids, what we call a myomectomy, mm -hmm. is actually one of the ways that we can treat uh, this problem. Okay. However, when we go to theater, mm -hmm. if these fibroids are in such a place whereby it's going to be a technical problem to actually remove them, 
and uh, you may start bleeding and we may not be able to stop the bleeding mm -hmm. then we have to make a decision whether it is your womb or your, your life. life it is obvious oh, la, la. but we make we, we 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 do this counseling before we go to theater such that the patient knows yeah. that actually we are going in to remove these fibroids yeah. but if it is not possible to remove all of them or if during the process of removing them there is an issue of bleeding and we cannot be able to stop that bleeding then the decision has to be made to actually remove the, the to do a hysterectomy we are not going to do, to do a hysterectomy okay, okay. all right so, all right ruth now okay. you know like we there's there, there's so much to cover here yes yeah, ding, and, ding, ding, blind yeah, spot, blind yeah, spot. yeah, and I think, and I think we're 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 gonna get back to that. There's someone actually here who's asking, you know, what's the doc's name again, and where does he practice the doc's it says name? Up on the screen, it's everything, uh, doc. But yeah, yes, we'll go but, ahead but we'll and remi say, we'll, we'll remind them again. It's Doctor Dr. Kireki Omanwa, uh, and uh, he's he's a fertility specialist. We're gonna, you know, like actually paste, you know, like all his details. He practices in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, and, as well uh, as on the one mic show. Yes, uh, uh, at 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 at, <laughs> Today at uh, only <laughs> at a facility in Gong Road, and is a senior lecturer at the University of Nairobi. So we will post those details for those maybe who wanna contact him, for those who need a consultation or anything of that sort. We're gonna post uh, those details for the guys for the guys in the two five four. Yeah. If anybody who is listening or on YouTube or whoever is listening, it's Fifth Avenue offices, Gong Road third floor room number 314 mm. okay and is there on tuesdays and wednesdays from 2 p.m to 7 boom yeah and it, i will repeat those yeah and, and i will post them over there yeah, and also post you know like the phone number of the facility the email so that yes. people can uh so that people to us end at the at the at the inbox at the inbox you have to do things in doctor's building you just go there yeah. stand in the lobby and scream <laughs> <laughs> there, there are doctors there yes at yes your Okay, sawa so, sawa. So, now so, Washeke so, and uh and Diaspora Youth Caucus, we've not forgotten your questions. We're gonna we're gonna come back to them. But uh Daktari, at yes, what please. point in life mm -hmm. should someone start worrying about their reproductive health? And are there any tangible symptoms, especially for men that indicate something may be amiss, Daktari? I think I'll start talking with the mothers first of all. Okay. So when we have this uh, little boy who has been born and mm -hmm. we are all very happy and proud that now I'm a man because unfortunately that is that is what happens um, um usually what happens is that when this little boy is in the mother's womb just before uh, it is born the testicles actually drop into the scrotum okay now when uh, he is born they are supposed to be in the scrotum already okay so here is talking to the ladies when they are washing their little uh, little young men mm -hmm. to actually check in the scrotum just to feel that ca ca tiny thing you know there's something there which feels like a bean yes it must be there yeah now that is where we should start checking okay because what happens is that sometimes you find uh, uh, we are not aware that actually the testicles maybe one side or even both sides they d did not descend into the into the scrotum um the gentleman will grow up, will have all the secondary characteristics. You know, you have your beard, your muscle, the testosterone is pumping through the, uh, through the system, but the production of sperm will not be there. So you find he gets married and everything is fine. They start trying two years, three years, sometimes even longer. And uh, obviously everything is okay from the lady's side. The man, he has never been tested. We have an aversion to go and um, to go and have ourselves tested. So when he comes, you find there is no sperm, isospermia. So when you talk about isospermia, um, there are two, there are several reasons why they may not be sperm. Now, now before we go further, when you talk about no <laughs> sperm, you know, let's let's so sperm, no, yeah. let's be specific here, because. Yes. Uh, because for the non-science mind, yes. when when they're thinking spam, yeah. they're thinking that fluid that comes out okay. during ejaculation. Okay. Uh, so is that what spam is? So that means if that fluid is not there, you have no spam. No. Or what exactly does Are no spam okay. mean? Uh, now, when a blind what's, spot. Ding ding ding. That's a blind spot. <laughs> exactly. It's a blind spot. Yeah. Now, um, uh, normally what happens is spam is produced elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It is stored elsewhere. During um, uh, intercourse, 
when uh, a man is having an orgasm a uh, sperm pushes you know david says we are wonderfully and beautifully made and that is one of the things it takes micro microseconds for that sperm from where it is ejaculated to pass through um, the tubes pass through the the uh, the prostate gland where it is mixed with seminal fluid that is the fluid you're talking about okay and then it comes out through the urethra where mm -hmm. the urine comes out through as an ejaculate with sperm okay now when you're talking about azospermia meaning no sperm it basically means that what comes out as an ejaculate is only the seminal fluid but there is no sperm now is there a way of knowing that just by looking at it or is that something that has to be tested very good now we have to test it okay that is why now when a couple comes and says look we've been trying and this and this we've taken down the history um for the gentleman we tell them it's a very simple procedure um you go to a lab first of all you abstain from intercourse three to five days you go to um you go to a lab and uh, they'll give you a container and uh, you give a sample you Two mean ways you, you mean they give you a porno and you watch and then you not to uh, in some places they have some places they don't but i uh, end result is that we want that sample yeah. mm -hmm. okay. now whichever way you whichever way it is there are it, two yeah. ways basically is masturbation most of the time and there are special condoms which i don't know whether they're available here in the us mm. but uh, in the uk they were available not the normal condoms because the normal condoms actually have a spermicide so once they have wow. given us okay. that sample mm -hmm. Uh, it is left to stand for about 15 minutes what we call liquefaction time it needs to become watery because there are so many parameters that we are going to check in that sample first of all we are going to take it in a, in a pipette and pull it and see whether you know it is longish okay we are going to look at the color what color is it mm -hmm. because that color will give us insight about what is happening we are going to check the ph of that uh, of that sample we are going to look at um, uh, how long it becomes liquid becomes watery then we start looking at now uh, the sample itself under a microscope because with the naked eye you cannot see anything you just see fluid and again this is another amazing thing that out of sperm which are invisible to the eye it has all the genetic coding that is going to decide Ruth's son or Ruth's daughter is going to have you know this height you know once they have you know mixed with the egg these are the characteristics of that baby it's mind-blowing out of this world so we look you at you can get that from the sperm test well no we see we look at the numbers oh, okay. we look at the character but okay. now these are things which are in that small uh, head okay everything is there okay so we um we look at the the we first of all we want to see whether they are they are they're sticking to each other because sperm can stick to each other they can stick head to head head to tail or even tail to tail or you may have a mixture of this actually on the on the on the slide which you can see that is already a problem it's not supposed to be there we look at the number of sperm in one milliliter what we call the concentration we looked at the volume we want the volume to be at least 1.5 milliliters or more okay then we look at the concentration how many sperms are in one milliliter we want them to be at least 15 million or more oh, wow. then we want to look at what is the count so if you have a volume of let's say three milliliters and we have a concentration of let's say 20 million per milliliter so we multiply three by 20 we get the count which is 60 million and we want it to be at least 40 million or more then we look at how this sperm is actually swimming because in order for it to be able to move from the cervix where it is placed during ejaculation and travel all the way through the uterus and through the tube until it meets with the egg at a particular point in the tube it just doesn't happen just like that it is a particular point in the tube it has to have good swimming ability so there are three or four different types of motion or um, uh, motility there is what we call type a which swims very fast if you can if come you saying bolt uh, uh, usain bolt uh, the sprinters <laughs> oh, manyala. Oh, manyala. Oh, manyala. <laughs> let's keep it home oh, manyala. So, kuna manyala. Yeah. Kuna manyala. Yeah. and then now there's type b uh -huh. which swim not as fast as the sprinters but also they have a direction 
So let's call that Kipchoge. Kipchoge. Ah, <laughs> ah, nice. So, so it's, a, it's a marathon runner. It's a marathon runner. Three, no, okay. kuna, kuna 3,000 meters. Kuna 3,000. Get round. It's 3,000. 3,000 meters. Yeah. Steeple chase. Hapa. Yeah. Yeah. Steeple chase. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Doktari yanelea. Haki nini. Ezekiel Kemboy. Kemboy. Uyo. Uyo. Alafu. And then there are others. There are others which actually just swim in one place. And they don't go anywhere. Okay. So it's in one place. Swimming. Bikama zimelewa. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, hold and on. And then there's the last attacked. one which are immortal. They don't move anywhere. So what we do we actually take the first one there's the sprinters, the omanyalas mm -hmm. and the kemboys. Yeah. Hizo ndio tunaziweka pamoja. Okay. A plus B. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want that to be at least 40%. Okay. 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 Now then after that we go to look at now what we call the morphology or the normal structure of that sperm. It must have a head, which is usually ovoid in shape. Mm -hmm. It has a neck piece, and then it has a tail. a tail. Now, we want that to be only 4% or more. So imagine out of that 60 million, the count, yeah. 4%, 10% will be 6 million. Yeah. So 1% will be 600,000. So 4% will be 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. So you just want 2.4 million or more. Okay. Now, apart from that, we want to see whether there are any white blood cells. White blood cells would actually signify Kwamba there is some sort of infection. Mm -hmm. We want to see whether there is fructose, which is also good for the sperm to swim. Okay. We want to see whether there are any red blood cells. That is not a good sign. Okay. We want to see whether there are any bacteria or any yeast around there because okay. that would also mean that there's an infection either there's an infection or the way this um, uh, ejaculate was collected was it collected by due to uh, normal uh, uh, normal uh, intercourse because during intercourse in the vagina the vagina has is um, you know very very rich in all manner of bacteria and whatever which is also important for actually for that ecosystem in the vagina to uh, hold on yes. re re repeat again it's very ding, rich. Ding, ding, blind very spot. Blind spot. Yes. It's very rich. They are good no. bacteria, blind bad bacteria. Blind spot. Good bacteria. Good bacteria. Yeah. 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 And we yeah. want a balance. Yeah. Yeah. We want a balance. Okay. Okay. So now when we look at this, um, uh, this, this results that we get is when you can tell a patient, you know, um, you have an issue with agglutination. Your sperm is sticking to each other. Not mm. a good thing because okay. um, getting pregnant, that is actually a reason for you are not getting pregnant. We can get around that. You have an issue with the numbers. For example, instead of 15 million per milliliter, you have 2 million. Too little. Too few. Okay. And when you multiply 2 million by 3 milliliters, it's 6 million. And we want 40 million. Okay. So what we call oligospermia. Okay. The numbers are there, but they're reduced. But okay. that, that sounds like so, a jaloo at your level. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, you know when, when, when Dr. Tari is talking... <laughs> The, the voice of my, my biology teacher is coming back, Mrs. Oyomno. You know, all the terminologies that he's using, you know, that voice is coming back, you know, like slowly by slowly, yes. which goes to show you the importance of, uh, high school of, of studying. But no, it's, it wasn't trauma. You know, I think Some it was a very important uh, subject to, it's a very important subject to study. Yeah. Now, there's, there's, uh, we, we, we are going to come because cause we are still, you know, like at what might be causing uh, the infertility and we're going to come to yes if there's remedies to it but but before we get there yes. there's a question here that's coming uh mimo kwenange is asking doctor is it too late for a girlfriend to check their man's balls to make sure the cabine, cabine. is there not meant to be funny this is a very serious question now for the By cabine yeah. for yeah. the for the, oh, for the girlfriend it won't be a cabine it will be something which is um, the consistency is hard mm -hmm. and uh, we need to know have a rough idea about the size as well yeah. So she may probably not know that consistency and that size. So yeah. how to check it? It's just basically to confirm that it is there, but whether it is okay is a different story altogether. Uh, so it can be there. It can be there, but it's still not but okay. But the size is small. Okay. Or it is soft the consistency, or it may not be there. It's in the abdomen. Okay. Let me ask a question to that. Yes. So it's from thirteen. Yes. As women, we are told, you know, you start, you start seeing your OBGYN. Not from thirteen to. 13 to 19, 20, not as frequent, but but if you if you do not get your period, yes. you will have to see a doctor for that. Yeah, that's why when you say it, it's a normal thing. I remember when I was growing up, going to buy my pads. I was in high school, 
uh, at this supermarket and normally we could number of feature yeah. and i was like if, <laughs> if, if 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 i don't have periods yes my parents or my future husband will spend so much money mm-hmm. trying to figure out what's wrong with me this is so normal yeah. so I, I i i was proud holding my pads going That's to pay for them yes. so it's very it's actually a serious thing if you don't get your period. Yeah. So you have to see a doctor. Mm. But then from your 20s, you advise to see your OBGYN mm. once a year, at you know, least, yeah. at least. Mm. Um do yeah. men have that? Cuz that's my blind spot. Now, men don't have that okay. unfortunately. Okay. Because it is assumed again, this again is another, another blind spot mm-hmm. that men are okay all the time. As for women because of that cycle, mm-hmm. you have something to show something exterior mm-hmm. there is a, there is a pad you know mm-hmm. men don't have to so it is assumed that they are okay and that is why infertility affects about 35 to 40 percent of men actually have the problem with infertility about 35 to 40 percent repeat that again so so wait 35 so to 40 percent so when you say 35 to 40 percent do you mean 35 to 40 percent of men or 35 to 40 percent of people who All are having infertility problems 35 to 40 percent of the population of men uh-huh. have an issue with infertility. Three to wow. four. Wanaume. That's, that's well, a fungeni show. Yes. Fungeni, fungeni show. Yes. Wanaume. Yes. Fungeni show. <laughs> 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 fungeni show. It's a big number. That's yeah. how they react. It's, yeah. a, it's a big number. Yeah, what? And, uh, yeah, and and I think that is. I mean, that is very telling because. Um, most people are hearing this for the first time yes you know like people yeah. don't know and, and of course like i remember at the beginning of the show we're talking about you know that this problem has historically been blamed on, on the women. woman yes. but we're seeing here there's a very high likelihood yeah. that uh the man is the one who might be having the problem those are questions that washeke asked and it kind of actually there are two questions we need to get go, back go, to go, 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 got them. lost yes. but uno you go go first and then we're gonna come back as, to you're, going, questions as, you're, as you're going to those questions mm-hmm. let me let me to support your point today yeah. mm-hmm. in preparation for this show uh i was talking to a pal of mine yes. mm-hmm. and i was talking about infertility and i told him and i think that the doctor mentioned where sometimes when a child is born mm-hmm. And he can correct me, but listening to his uh, his presentations, yes, something is supposed to fall in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the scrotal sac. Yeah, something is, a, is supposed to fall in there so that it can be supported. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now from there, that is where we get, I guess, uh, the sperm or something. Yeah. But sometimes at childbirth, mm-hmm. if you're a boy, or before childbirth, I think those when you're supposed when you're born, those things don't fall in. Yeah. They don't fall in place. Yeah. To make sure that now everything everything is aligning in in is is aligning such that as you grow, you know, you you you're going to be that uh, guru masimba. Yeah. Mm. He did not know that sometimes that thing that those things happen where those your testicles don't they, they, they don't, don't fall, fall in place. It fall in place into yeah. the scrotum. Mm-hmm. He did not know that. Yeah. They, do, yeah. they do not descend. They, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. They and do not descend. descend. Oh, oh, my bad. And, my and bad. I think it would be best even in another forum if maybe you could even use diagrams because you're talking about mothers checking and I think fathers too should also be involved in this uh checking their 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 boys 100%. you know like when they're young to yeah. see if there's a problem so that yeah. they can know early mm-hmm. and then I think it's also I mean if the numbers you know like uh the numbers that you're giving us if that's a case I think certain things, you know, like when men go for their annual checkups, yeah. I, I think this is something yes. that that should be included. But before, uh, but be, yeah, no, but, but hold on. Do, but men, do men go for those annual checkups? That's 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 it's okay. Another, something else. Hold on. I think we need another show for okay. that. Doctor, yeah, we need another show. Yeah, another show. Yeah, we need but doctor, second warning. Second warning. Second warning. But 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 doctor, but doctor, okay, if those things have not descended, yes. Is it something that you can tell, let's say, when you go for your, for the, you know, like when the woman goes for her, the checkup, you know, like when you're going for the, before, before childbirth, you know, like you're looking at, you know, when you, when you do that ultrasound. Yes. Is it something that you can see then? Um, this thing can only be, the, the, this, this can only be confirmed once the baby has been born. So the baby has been born. Yes. And if we actually feel, you can actually feel, Kwamba. Yeah. Kuna kuna kakitu. Kakitu hapa, na hapa kuna kakitu. Yeah. Ama hapa kuna, and yeah. here it is there. Yeah. So it can be. That is why I, I said right at the beginning, uh, talk to the 
the mothers. Okay. But especially when they're washing the the, 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 the babies. But I think also yeah. maybe they no. should also be taught because yeah. they don't know exactly probably Th what you feel for. Thing. No, yeah. the babies can't know. No, 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 no. The, the mother, the, the mother, the mother, yes. like, like, should. But the mother also, should. you know what to I be want taught. To, like, that should be part of the of the Absolutely. when you go for the prenatal. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is what you're supposed I to. I want feel, to add to this because yes. right now we are all doing intentional parenting. Mm -hmm. So men, mm -hmm. as are more present as fathers, this something. This is one route that you can definitely be part of your child's Absolutely. life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So now coming back to your question. Can they, do we know, how do we know? They present now, later on, with a problem of infertility. To me, Jaribu, na haifanyikani. Could it have been fixed then? Sorry, if they if, if it is detected discovered early. earlier mm -hmm. yeah. in childhood, yes, it can be fixed. Okay. okay. Good so, to know. so now, wow. when they, they come later on, you do a sperm test, there is no sperm. You're asking, what exactly does esospermia mean? So I explained, you know, there's sperm, mm -hmm. you know, esospermia, there's no sperm at all. Yeah. So, um, it's so the just next an thing, empty fluid. It's just fluid, yeah. seminal fluid. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we want to find out, where is the problem? Because there can be two issues. There can be what we call, um, these, they are blocked tubes. Mm -hmm. And there can be another issue where the tubes where the sperm pass through, they are okay. Now, if the tubes are blocked, because remember I told you they are produced somewhere, they are stored elsewhere. Yes. And they move and they pass through the prostate, they come out with the, as an ejaculate. If the tubes are blocked, what do we do? Or what do we do? What, how do we try and find out whether the problem is, um, uh, is production or not production? We do, a, we do a, um, a hormone test, that is a blood test, mm -hmm. and then we also do that scan that you mentioned. Mm. Okay. So we do a hormone test. There are about four or five hormones which we do, and we find that the hormone levels are fine. So if the hormone levels are fine, and we have done a scan, a scrotal ultrasound scan, and everything is fine, the, the testicles are there, they are, the, they are good size, uh, the blood flow is okay, there is no fluid around the testicles, the veins are not swollen, it is it is in. So we find here it is okay. So the issue is basically blocked tubes, okay. all right? If we do that test and there is no sperm, we do hormone test, we find that the hormone, two or three of those hormone levels are elevated, and we do a scan, we find that... Um, in the scrotum, yes, the testicles are there, but they are small, what you call hypoplasia, and uh, the blood flow is okay, and there's no any other pathology, so the issue is production. Okay. So that is a very easy way of, you know, uh, finding out what the problem is. There is also another third issue where you have a congenital problem, a hereditary problem, whereby um, uh, uh, there is a problem called... Um, mucoviscidosis yeah whereby there is um, mucus in any organ which has a hole has a lumen mucus accumulates there okay uh, but fortunately this is not a problem we have in our part of the world okay. it is very very prominent amongst uh, the jewish people because of intermarriage and passing this genetic oh, wow. problem to okay. their children yeah those ones will never have children let me drop a okay. big one. Yeah. Vas deferens. Uh, go ahead, can you? Yes, and, and, and <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you know that's what um, you know, like uh, will bring us to our next question. But yes. I know there were can questions I, here yeah. that, that that were there. You know, yeah. that, that that one about genetics. You know, yes. because it's something that I want us to talk about. L but let's go to the questions that were asked earlier. Let, yes. Let's address this because I yeah. think uh, we, we we moved from I had said fibroids, HPV, <laughs> then we got to infertility. <laughs> but it's okay. So yes. it's okay. So we're gonna go uh, back a bit. Yeah. Address okay. HPV because we're gonna answer a question and then i'm gonna start with the question from asheke okay. so asheke wants to know yes um let me get to that um why are we seeing girls starting mm. their menses at a very early age normally uh it, it used to be 12 13 14 yeah. it's dropping to seven they're still kids yeah uh yeah, actually actually that. the average in uh, in kenya is about 13 14 years mm -hmm. Um, uh, very rarely do we find one who has started, you know, uh, a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing, and that is the research which has been done in the past, and there is evidence, excuse me, what is called precocious puberty, mm -hmm. whereby you find these very young, young uh, girls, sometimes some of them have breasts, you know, some of they have cycles and mm -hmm. so on. It could be an endocrinological problem in that um, 
the body is not functioning the way it should. Mm-hmm. It has started functioning too early mm-hmm. and it, um, it's not supposed to be that way. The other thing which has actually been found is because of the food that we eat and especially in this country whereby uh, the chicken, for example, they have been pumped with hormones and Ooh. those hormones actually get into our system. And this leads to activation of the, of the, of the endocrine system a lot earlier than it should. So we have an issue with that. And it is also getting to our so places So this is as diet. Well. Diet. So, so, so diet. The, the GMO, the GMO that now is a topic in Kenya. Yes. Is that part of the diet that uh, is is leading to uh, to this issue, or maybe that's that's a the whole GMO, other? Topic. I think the GMO is slightly different. Okay. But here is whereby a case whereby, for example, chicken are fed. You know, uh, they are pushed to grow fast. very fast. Very yeah. Fast. In, in maybe forty five days, they already you know they're mature, ready to yeah. be mature, and uh, normally they cannot grow that fast in okay. normal conditions. So they are fed with hormones. They are given antibiotics and so on and so forth, such that they you know is a market. And wow. not, on, not only chicken, even, uh, even the cows as even well. Even the cows, yeah. Yeah, they're given hormones so that they can produce more milk and so on. And some of this milk actually does, some of these hormones actually do get into, um, uh, into the food chain and we, we, you know, we, uh, we consume them. And these are some of the problems that we are, we are facing now. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. Let's, um, I, 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 my follow-up question would be, so what do we do to prevent that from happening? Because I think that is like, that's very scary. But yes. I think we're already in the problem. A difficult, uh, a difficult thing to, uh, to sort out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, move I'm, back to Kenya. I'm not very sure. I mean, we can move back to Kenya, but even in Kenya, we are also... <laughs> yeah, we have the, the same problem. <laughs> KFC, Kondani, <laughs> Monsanto, <laughs> deep. Yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe you have to be a bit more careful um, about the foods that we eat, especially um, animal protein, mm-hmm. because uh, plant protein, we don't give them any... They are not given any, any, any hormones, hormones to grow. Yeah. Okay. So that is something. But then the other thing is that with the, uh, with the plants, there are herbicide and pesticides as well. Which you also have to, which you also have monitor, to monitor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Now, 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 you know, the interesting <laughs> thing is that I, I know, you know, because I travel a lot around East Africa. Yeah. In the island of Zanzibar, yeah. they allowed Purdue chicken to set shop there. Yeah. So some of this chicken, this nice chicken that you're eating, for those who've been to Zanzibar at Forodhani, yes. um, that's Purdue chicken. Mm. Uh, the Tanzania mainland, yeah. Walikata. Very sensible. Yeah, Tanzania mainland Walikata because you know they operate under two systems. Yes. Now I think Purdue mm. also set shop in Kenya, if I'm Which, not mistaken. Uh, I think so. Yes, <laughs> Purdue chicken also set shop in Kenya. Yeah. So people in Kenya. Is that why Kenchik left us, boss? Are also eating Purdue them. chicken. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know which is which is that chicken that has. Yeah. Those that is talking Mashakura. about. Mashakura. So yeah. this problem is in Kenya, Ruth. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, because of time, uh, you need to move to HPV. Okay. I know we we are kind of have to come back. Is this finish this and we can go to fertility, infertility? Yes. HPV. The yes. question on HPV. Yes. Was um so there are strains of HPV that can cause cancer. That is true. Um and these are part of past pap smear. Yeah. They they screen for that uh, yes. every every year because you know it, it, dep- it depends on the country and yes. it depends on the guidelines. Yes. Yeah. So. This person asked, uh, I'm trying to go back there, it's, it's a serious issue. I was wondering if HPV 18, yes. please tell us how many strains there are that can cause cancer. Mm. Is cancerous in women? And is is it equivalent to male infertility because men live in denial? Mm. I don't know what in, they mean by that. Probably you do. But can you please talk about HPV? Okay. Uh, how it's transmitted? Yeah. What are the carriers? Yeah. ETC, ETC. HPV, human papilloma virus, again, uh, as the name uh, suggests, is a viral, is a viral disease, okay. which um, there are hundreds of strains or hundreds of subgroups of um, uh, HPV. Okay. And um, some of them actually, we actually have seen, maybe when we were growing up, you find somebody has something here which is growing. You think, ah, in, in where I was coming from, the, where I come from, they used to say, ah, uyu nila na chokoza, chokoza watu. That is why it is growing there mm-hmm. but wow. basically it's a what okay mm-hmm. so apart from other words it also uh, is um is a cause of genital words and these genital words can grow anywhere around the perineal area can grow in the uh, in the vulva 
Um, yeah. on Inside? This, on, the, on the cervix, yes. And sometimes they're humongous and they also look like cabbage, you know, when they come out. It's horrible sometimes when you look at them, you can have a nightmare. Now, That's shocking. It is shocking, very, very shocking. Now, um, um, yes, there are uh, strains. Actually, a gen the gentleman who got a um, um, uh, Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology was uh, actually somebody who from Germany who actually proved that um, HPV is the cause of cervical cancer. Oh, wow. Mm. And he actually went through in his research and he actually came up and said, look, this is actually the connection. And usually from infection until you have the first signs of cervical cancer, the period, the time, the time frame is about 15 to 20 years. Which coincides with mm -hmm. usually the time when a woman, uh, um, uh, ladies start having their first uh, intercourse. So if I, if I say if I first, your first intercourse around 15 years, 16 years, mm -hmm. and then uh, by the time we have the symptoms, the signs of cervical cancer, um, you are about in your 30s, late 20s, early 30s. Okay. Now. In, in this period. Yes. If it's caught. Yes. Can it be prevented? Um, uh, now that is where the vaccine comes in. Okay. The vaccine comes in because before that, mm -hmm. before there was not this clear you know connection between hpv and cervical cancer mm -hmm. basically we were not doing anything about it mm -hmm. you would come a lady would come and we see that there's their uh, vaginal warts we would actually you know treat them mm -hmm. there's something that we'd use and we treat them mm -hmm. if they are very big we'd cut them and uh, use um, uh, liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. to to remove them mm -hmm. or sometimes you just cauterize them with energy Okay. Now that now the the fact that now we ha do have um, we do have a vaccine, mm -hmm. it is better to prevent mm -hmm. than to wait. Oh, Niki Pata ndi onta kupata vaccine. Mm -hmm. It's better to before. go okay. to go for the vaccine. Yeah. Now there are different types of vaccines. Mm -hmm. There is a vaccine which covers only two of them, two mm -hmm. subgroups. There is another one which covers four of them, what you call a quadrivalent mm -hmm. vaccine. Mm -hmm. And there is a new one which is supposed to cover nine subgroups, what is called a nanovalent um, a vaccine. Mm -hmm. In our part of the world, we have uh, the the one that covers two and the one that covers four. Okay. Talking about um, the pushback mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, about can, can the vaccine. We, let's talk about the pushback and, and, on and, vaccine. And we're yeah. now, we're and now and running out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're really running out of time. Uh, yes, but we yes. do need to address because it's very important as well. Okay, yes. Now, before we even go there, there's the issue of how is it transmitted. Yeah. It is a sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. So you will get somebody who has, um, who ha who has it and having intercourse without protection. Mm -hmm. uh, the man has, um, uh, without using a, a, a condom, mm -hmm. he actually can transmit it to you. Or mm -hmm. he can also pick it from you mm -hmm. and transmit it to, to somebody else. else. Okay, yeah. so it's a two-way or even three-way. Call it three-way. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do a is to zero grace. Call it that way. Mm -hmm. Have okay. one partner, mm -hmm. and and that is it. Okay. <laughs> Not, uh, <laughs> what about the vaccine to men? Because that's now, a very uh, new thing. Uh, now, men right. are pushing yeah. back on it. Yeah. And now, then we now, finish. now we need to take a break. <laughs> we, we actually need to take a break. We'll take a break after this part. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we're going to come back. Just one, two minutes, two minutes, yeah. and you take a break. Okay. Yeah. Now, the issue of vaccination actually is something which has been uh, propagated for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And um, there is, I mean, because if we know that the life from infection to cervical cancer is about 15 years, mm -hmm. so why don't we vaccinate? all young girls mm -hmm. such that by the time it gets they get there mm -hmm. they will be protected mm -hmm. um, uh, which is a good idea mm -hmm. because prevention is better than a cure mm -hmm. now they went a little bit further and said why are we vaccinating only young girls why not vaccinate also the the boys. young boys as well yeah. mm -hmm. which has actually been taken up by, by some countries mm -hmm. for example in australia some states of australia mm -hmm. took it up very well and and they did that some countries in europe have actually taken it up mm -hmm. um, um texas had a problem even with vaccinating vaccinating the young girls themselves in kenya what happened is that we had um, we had a pilot a pilot study mm -hmm. where some counties one of them one of them i think was kitui and two or three others mm -hmm. whereby we, they actually got free vaccines 
to uh, vaccinate uh, girls. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of pushback from, from the parents mm -hmm. saying, no, what you're doing is actually you're opening the gates uh, for these uh, young girls later on okay. to be pro uh, promiscuous, promiscuous and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, uh, a small problem that people don't talk about is about those words, the, 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 the boys actually getting those words in the trachea, the, uh, the breathing tube. Because for those ones of, um, for the men who, who, who do oral sex, mm -hmm. actually can get those words from uh, an, an infected lady, and that can be a problem. A small problem as well is about penile cancer. They can also have penile cancer. Also the same sort of mechanism, even though the percentages are quite small. Okay. Wow. All right. So, so I want to remind the listeners that <laughs> this is the interview hour of the One Mike Show, bro. And we're in studio with OBGYN and fertility specialist Dr. Kireki Omanwa. Now, Dr. Omanwa is a renowned fertility expert and is also a senior lecturer uh, at the University of Nairobi uh, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He's with us today to talk about the taboo topic of infertility, which is not talked about uh, so much. Now, we're going to take a quick break. You know, there's so many other things that uh, we have to talk about. We know there's a lot of questions that are coming in. Uh, and, uh, you know, like well, one of the things that we're going to be talking about when we come back from the break is uh, on infertility. Is it a random occurrence? Is it genetic? Um, are there maybe lifestyle issues or habits that can lead to infertility you know In we're men. talking yeah alcohol diet weed men. mira you know there was someone who was asking about obesity uh. you know exercise you know contact sports you know horse riding biking hot environments uh -huh. all these things we're going to talk about them laptop uh, do you in the, in, 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 in do the you social laps? segment yeah. all of them in the social segment or even hot baths you know kukanda ni a bathtub when you know me mzima na unakanda ni a bathtub kwa maji moto unafanya nini so those are the things that we're going to talk about in the second half uh, but um, yeah.